The first time that the word automobile showed up in print in the U.S. was when Charles Shanks published a series of articles on May 22, in 1899. They were about engine designer, Alexander Winton's road trip from Cleveland to New York City. This prompted a dinner table conversation that led to a $50 bet that a person could not motor across the continent. On a whim, motor car enthusiast and medical doctor, Horatio Jackson, set out on May 22, in 1903. It took him 62 days to drive from San Francisco to New York City, a distance of 3,000 miles. Assuming that he drove 12 hours per day, he averaged 4 miles per hour. In 1980, Frank Giannino ran across the U.S. in just 46 days. Before today's superhighways, the rivers had been, and still are, a major way to ship goods and get places. One even paved the way to the White House for one fellow, and that's just what today's story is about. In 1826, an industrious teenager, seeing an opportunity, built for himself a flatboat that would allow him to dock alongside moving riverboats, transfer cargo and passengers, and return to the same shore. He was careful not to transport the goods, nor people across the river, because he did not have a ferry license. This however, did not set well with the men, who did have a license, and charges were filed. Young Abraham responded to the charges by showing up on the Kentucky side of the Ohio River in the courtroom of Judge Samuel Pate. He was charged with not turning over the ferry tax. Lincoln admitted to conveying passengers to the middle of the river, but collected no tax, since he did not take the passengers across the river. Judge Pate focused on one word in the Kentucky statute. It said that a ferry transports cargo and passengers over the river. Lincoln was acquitted and he found a mentor. Pate loaned a law book to the young man, suggested that he study it and return to discuss it with him in a month. This is where we get the story that Master Lincoln borrowed books, read them by firelight, and walked miles to return them. It is also how he became interested in the law, and this paved the way for him to be the 16th President of the United States of America. Once again we are reminded that sometimes a gift to a youngster is much more than a gift. I am sure that the greater gift was the discussion and wise counsel that was shared between the two. The river still had a great attraction to Lincoln. To this date, he remains the only president to have ever received a patent. On May 22, in 1849, he was granted a patent for buoying boats over shoals. Encourage encouragement. Especially in youngsters.